Get ready for a travel adventure unlike anything you've seen before. We're heading to England to explore its Roman baths and roam the country's historic canal system by narrowboat. Is it bath or bath? I think it really depends on where you're from. Obviously, this is not bath. And it's no exaggeration to say, this trip is going to be life-changing. So this is it, it's just us, baby. This, yes, is a little, yes. this is a little scary. Very scary. We're Wendy and Lawrence, and we love to travel. We went from Dubai to the Maldives to this. It's cold. This travel adventure is more personal than any other trip we've shared. You're joining us as we make a huge life decision. Should we tell our big secret now? Sure. So the big secret is this. Go ahead and tell me. Making everything even more exciting, Wendy and I are joined by my mom, brother, and aunts for this incredible adventure. Would anybody like to try a Regency biscuit at all? So pack your bags for a very British adventure. Naturally, we have to fly British Airways for our English adventure. But first, we have time to enjoy a local burger place. And even better, a talented local musician. We've struggled through a summer of triple-digit temperatures, so we're definitely looking forward to the cooler weather in England. But even as we head into the night, we know tomorrow is going to be one crazy day of travel. Normally when we arrive at Heathrow, most of our travel is behind us. Not this trip. Flying from our hometown of Austin, Texas, the travel has just begun. We're at Heathrow Airport, and my family are in Kings Lynn, Norfolk, where they live. We've all decided to make our own way to Bath. The first ones there win. As the famous English detective likes to say, the game's afoot. My family are traveling by car. We're traveling to Bath by train, changing trains at West Drayton, and finally at Reading. 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 Say it with us. Ready? Next station, Hayes and Harlington. Changing trains at West Drayton is unexpectedly easy. Everything's looking good so far. We think we've worked out how to get halfway, but when we get to Reading, we're going to find out if our train is affected by a strike that started. Actually, I don't know if it starts today or tomorrow. Yes, so. The train at Reading not only turns up, but it's on time. We made it to Bob. We did. We stood the entire, what was it, an hour and a half? An hour and a half. But it's all right because there is a strike going on, so there's limited trains. Yeah. So we were thankful to stand for an hour and a half. Yeah. It's worth it. You walk right off the train station. It was gorgeous. And the sun is peeking out. Yeah. 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 Bath is supposed to be a walkable city, and we're pretty close to our hotel. So off we go. We find out we're the first to check in at our hotel, the Hampton by Hilton. We even have enough time to clean up and go to a local pub right across the street and try some local beers. Uh, where are we? We're in Bath. We finally made it, huh? Actually, is it Bath or Bath? I think it really depends on where you're from. Even in this country. Because on the train, I heard it two different ways. Yeah. And I felt like it was more English to say boss, but there are very different pronunciations and dialects around here, so I'm not an expert. 
What do you have in front of you now? I have the Bristol. No, I have the Bath Ale. Do you want to try it and tell me what you think about it? Yeah, it's good. It is. It's very good. It's a bit on the light side, but it's got kind of that slightly sour ending, but not too sour. So if you had the bath, I have the Bristol. Yes. Right? And they're lagers, so they're supposed to be light, right? Oh, you're right. I think I called mine the bath ale, but it was a bath lager. It's good. Is it? You know, it's the equivalent, and this is being very detrimental to English beer because this is where it all started, but it's like a blonde oh. um, that you would have in the States, but um, this has got a nice, you can taste the hops in it. You are, um, you are a disgrace to your British heritage, babe. I obviously need to move back and absolutely start regaining my heritage. Yes. You want to compare it to mine? Yeah, let me do that. Let me try this. So. So the, this is the bath lager. Okay, this is stronger. Is it? Yes. And yet it's by color. Which one's darker? Uh, I, I would. They're uh, about the same. They are about the same. But this one has got more uh, bite yeah, to it. No. Oh. Definitely. All right, now I'm gonna have to try it. Oh. Right. Yeah. I mean. Just slightly. It's not like a huge variation, but yes. But uh, but both are good, and it's doing it's doing its job. It's allowing us to sort of relax and sort of get our bearings while we wait for your family to arrive because they should be arriving shortly. And we are a stone's throw. What is that? A half a block from our hotel. Yeah. They'll be pulling up. My family did arrive, and we spent the evening just catching up. It looks like it's a bit of a wet start to our first full day in Bath. Good morning. Good morning on this nice, drizzly, overcast day. It's an English day, for sure. (laughs) And here's the thing, because we've just come from, what, 60 days of 100 plus temperatures, we will take something below 70 and a little bit of drizzle. We don't even need a gift wrap, thank you very much. <laughs> so we are about to go into the Roman baths. We're going into the Roman baths. Yeah, yeah. And actually, bath, the reason it's here is because of the baths. So let's go have a look. The Roman baths sit in the shadow of the Bath Abbey and were built by the Romans in 60 AD for public bathing. Over a million liters of water pushes its way up into the baths at piping hot temperatures of 118 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees centigrade. We first see the great bath from an upper terrace where we're joined by the Roman emperors and governors of Roman Britain. If you do come to the Roman baths, look for the actors wandering the site. They'll even interact with you in Latin. Daily life in the spa during Roman times can be seen in the smaller baths through the cleverly projected actors on the walls. And guess what? They want you to drink the water here. Mm. It's warm water. But it tastes minerally. Yes, it does. It does taste minerally. And quite frankly, I feel like uh, I'm getting 10 years younger as it goes down. It cures all of your ales. That's what it's doing. So what do you think about the Roman baths? It was gorgeous. Right? It was absolutely beautiful. It was way more than I expected. Because not only do you see the baths themselves, but they have this really uh, great setup that takes you underground, where you can see where they've excavated. You can see parts that um, used to actually have water in them, but are now sort of covered with algae or uh, they're empty as well. Just a really nice uh, museum that goes along with it. And the funniest thing that we found out, which we did not know before going in, that was actually um, there since pagan times. When the Romans came, they assumed it as their own and now called the Roman baths. So I guess when you take something over, you get to name it. 
So the beauty about Bath, if you're visiting, is there's a lot of tourist stuff that's within walking distance of each other. So you'll start in one place, you turn a corner and you're at something else. Speaking of which, right behind us is the Bath Abbey. And we're gonna go in there. It started in the seventh century and it's been renovated over three or four different centuries. So we're gonna go in and explore if you wanna come along with us. See you inside. But before we go in, check out the architect's interpretation of Jacob's Ladder, the biblical story about a ladder to heaven. It's incredible. As soon as you step into the Abbey, make sure to look up and take in the amazing fan vaulted ceilings. You can see these in London's Westminster Abbey as well. Up to 1,200 people can be seated in the church. There's going to be a wedding later today, so no pressure to fill all those seats. Your admission ticket into the church comes with a free tour that takes you into the bell tower and up the tallest steeple. We won't be doing that today, but you should definitely check it out. You can spend hours exploring the Abbey, but we have people waiting on us who obviously need to be reminded that I take video and not photographs. So don't hold the pose too long. <laughs> don't hold your breath or something. If you do visit the Abbey, make sure to swing by the Southern Plaza as you're leaving. There always seems to be local musicians performing. The day is definitely catching up with us, and with Bath living up to its reputation of a walkable city, it's only a thousand foot walk back to our hotel to drop off Mum and Jenny. That's only just over 300 meters. Wendy and I have decided to head out on our own, and we're going to explore more of Bath by foot. We want to check out the famous circus and, of course, have to walk up the city's famous hills to get there. So after that long walk, here we are in the circus. And there are no clowns. <laughs> so the circus, if you come to Bath, generally speaking, what they're talking about is this circle of uh, Georgian homes that were built in the mid-1700s. Designed by architect John Wood, the circus mimics Stonehenge's shape. His son built the circus after his father died, and it became the best example of Georgian architecture. There are a lot of tourists here, but they aren't necessarily checking out the architecture or famous residents. So if it looks familiar to you, this circus has been used in a lot of period pieces, different films. Yep, yeah. Honestly, if you've watched any period piece and you see one person walking from one house to the other or, or walking out to get in their carriage, this is it. <laughs> Anyway, so I think we need to take some more looks down these back streets and take some more pictures because we quite frankly don't have enough of Bath at this point. <laughs> it's time to head over to the Royal Crescent, a row of 30 terraced houses laid out in a sweeping crescent designed and built by the son of the man who designed the circus. A lot of television shows and movies were filmed here as well. The actors seem to walk more gracefully through these streets than we do. Again, actors, us. Yeah, we need to work on our gliding and grace. It doesn't help that it's really starting to warm up. 
The English are known for their love of gardens, and Bath takes this to extremes with large, gorgeous gardens. And you never know who you'll meet in Bath. Wait, I think I know her from YouTube. Sure, Bath is definitely a walkable city, but if you do visit, you should take advantage of the hop-on, hop-off buses known as the Toot Bus. Your ticket is good for two days, and the route takes you through the most famous parts of Bath with the best view if you're lucky enough to find a seat on the top deck. And you can jump on and off to explore. We even discovered just how educational the audio tour really is. Pop quiz. Okay. Name one thing you learned from the tour right now. They have a very nice children's park. All of the rich people left Bath in 1810. Okay, what did you learn, Jenny? Where the chairmen were, where the sedan chair guys lived and hung out waiting to be selected. I learned that Bo Nash has several uh, uh, stores named after him as we were passing them. Here you go, hon, here's a pop quiz. What was, what was Bo Nash referred to as? Uh, a dandy. Yes, yeah. well done. But only because you said it. There are many beautiful reasons Bath draws so many people from around the world. Being designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site helped preserve Bath, and everybody loves the Roman Baths. But Bath really owes its early popularity to Bo Nash. Called a master of ceremony at the time, we would consider him an influencer or even a TikToker, telling the rest of the country how wonderful Bath and its social scene really was, and making it the center of the fashion world. Of course, Bath is known for its most famous daughter, English novelist Jane Austen. We're starting our second full day focused on the Sense and Sensibility author. So today's adventure in Bath is going to the Jane Austen Museum. I found a local expert on Jane Austen and uh, why she was important to Bob and English literature. So why was she so important, strange lady I've never met before? <laughs> well, she was important because she wrote the truth. Um, as a woman of her time, she couldn't publish under her own name because women didn't get published. So she wrote under a male name. And her books were very acute and incisive about the habits and morality of the upper classes. So it didn't go down terribly well with the upper classes. So she didn't sell well until the distributing library started distributing her books. She was never very rich in her lifetime. And during the course of her time in Bath, the family had to move several different times as their financial situation decreased. They had to move to poorer and poorer accommodation. But she was here for a long time and she made this a very fashionable place to be. So uh, we're gonna go see all about her life and, and you probably guess this is not some strange person I grabbed off the street, but my Aunt Jenny, because <laughs> I just don't hold people this closely unless I'm related in some manner or form of fashion. So. No, and in the mores of Jane Austen, I would not have hugged a strange man this closely. <laughs> Using our toot bus pass to save us from walking, we're practically dropped off at the museum's front door, where we spot a real celebrity. Lucy Worsley, a British historian and television presenter, was also visiting the museum today. But did she play the Jane Austen games and watch the videos at the start of the museum tour? We're gonna to have to come back to the James Austen festivals. Ten spectacular days in September. The museum not only walks you through Jane Austen's life and writings, but the world she lived in. Even the biscuits Jane would have enjoyed. Would anybody like to try a Regency biscuit at all? Well, yeah, why not? Yes? Well, Come forward. Yeah. Suddenly, our guide tells us it's time to dress up. All in the fashions of Jane Austen's world, of course. Oh, God, you're amazing. Can I actually compliment Janet? Oh, so <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. Awesome. Hey, 
Hang on. Wait, shoulders back. And a bonnet for you yes. and this one. That works. I will you should that Okay, fine. What comes next? Pictures, of course, with Mr. Darcy, no less. Now we're stepping back into the real world and it's hot weather. It's time to grab some tea and talk about the museum. Uh, not really being into Jane Austen, I surprisingly found it very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. I learned a lot because I didn't know anything. And the dressing up part was really fun. Well, I love Jane Austen. Um, I love the fact that the reenactors all were in beautiful costumes and knew their stuff. They knew what they were talking about and all the visual displays were very apropos, very good. I loved it! <laughs> I am definitely a Jane Austen fan. The dressing up was fun and exciting, even talked to you into doing it. <laughs> and um, I think it's, a, it's something different. It's not a museum in the sense that, you know, it's smaller so you can get through it quickly if you wanted to you still get a sense of Jane Austen, um, especially as her many residents were in Bath, so you get a taste of that as well. Um, but it's not overwhelming, it's a light slice of history, so I think it's almost a new thing to So uh, guys, when you go, just just know you're going to have to forgive your wife for touching uh, Mr. Darcy's bum <laughs> at the bench because it's going to happen. Just let it go. Just move on. It's time to make our way for what many are considering the highlight of our bath adventure. All set to a backdrop of beautiful weather which has drawn out the crowds and some talented local musicians. The main reason for coming to Bath was to celebrate my mom's birthday. Sure, we turned both the dinner at the Griffin Inn and the circus into birthday dinners. And yes, she had two nights of birthday cakes. But today, today is the official celebration with afternoon tea at the pump room. The pump room is named for the water that's pumped into the room from the Roman Baths hot springs located right next door. The well-to-do would come to the pump room and drink the bath water in a more civilized surrounding. If you're interested in having afternoon tea here, and obviously we'd recommend it, book well in advance. Wendy booked two months before our trip and even then there was limited availability. We've linked to the pump room's website below. And here's the classiest water fountain you'll ever find. You don't need a reservation to come in and drink from it. Just walk in, taste it, and then you have your picture taken, of course. The hardest part of afternoon tea was knowing what was in everything. Regardless, it was all delicious. And of course, one needs classical music as one enjoys afternoon tea. It's our last full day in Bath, so we'll walk off this afternoon tea by taking in the amazing sights around the gardens and the nearby river. Built in 1774, Pulteney Bridge dominates this part of the river looking down on the weir below as the seagulls entertain surrounding crowds. If you have time during your next trip to Bath, maybe consider taking a very English river cruise. As the day disappears, we all know our bath adventure is coming to an end. And our last ride on the tube bus will take us back to the hotel. Obviously, this is not bath. 
<laughs> Wendy and I hitch a ride with my family as they drive back home to King's Lynn. They kindly drop us off in Oxford so we can start the next exciting part of our very British adventure. But not before we have one more meal together at a local pub. Coming up on the next episode of Love to Travel, it's up the Oxford Canal by Narrowboat, where we run into some very famous YouTube faces. <laughs> Looking Hi. very bedraggled and sweaty oh, in this beautiful, beautiful day that we're having. We face some incredibly tough narrowboat challenges. Oh, so that was a little bit of an adventure. And we live every part of a narrowboat life on the English canals. So we're doing the tradition of uh, narrow boaters by buying our shopping and then having to carry it all the way back to the canal. See what here it is. And be very careful because that is the bag with my wine in it. The next episode is seriously going to be life changing for Wendy and I. So make sure you don't miss it by subscribing to the Love to Travel channel. If you click the bell, you'll be alerted as soon as the next video is published. If you like this adventure, give the video a thumbs up. We think Jane Austen would. Until next time, my friend, travel well and be safe. <laughs>